In this video, I want to introduce a few more things about the Tools for Mastery Mathematics curriculum. First of all, the website is being launched. We have one called toolsformath.org, but we're going to launch one specific to helping people actually learn the concepts in the curriculum. So this video is just quickly introducing you to the big picture, and then we're going to focus on some of the other details. One of the things I find interesting is right now we teach pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, pre-calc, and geometry in five years. That's what we do right now. Uh, how we came to that conclusion, I don't know. And that, I'm not saying it's all wrong that we teach it in five years. If people need time to learn it in that time frame, that's fine. But I think that we are, again, spending our time in some ways not being as efficient as we can be. And I want to explain what I mean. So in the project, I explained that we took all the, we're trying to reduce duplication and increase mastery. So what we did then is we realized that kids in Algebra 1, for example, will learn how to graph y is equal to mx plus b. But in Algebra 2, they will also revisit that, maybe briefly. But if I am a diligent learner, and I love to do mathematics, then I don't want to show up on day one of Algebra 1, learn y is equal to mx plus b, then keep that knowledge with me through the year. In the summer, I'm practicing my math. Remember, math is like a sport. If LeBron James has to practice his free throws and, and, and he does well at the sport that he does, how do you think you're going to be good at math if math is like a sport? You have to practice. There is no way around the summer issue. There is just no way around it. And so when I hear people comparing math in America versus other countries, what they forget is that in many of those countries, they don't take three months off completely from doing math. Where I grew up, the most we had off was one month. And even within that month, you wanted to keep practicing. And so I say all of that to say this. When we look at what we're doing in math, we might want to revisit and see how can we make it more efficient, more effective. And before I tell you why we should make it more effect effective and efficient, I want to say something. So what I did was I took Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. There's a curriculum. Uh, there's some free open source materials out there. Many colleges have these books. So I took some of those with the permission of the author. And I said, what if my student went through this book you know, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, what if they just went through this book in a year? That's where it started, in a sense. And then I realized I took the, the Larson textbook that is used for pre-calculus in many universities around the country. And I realized something. You can actually take Algebra 1, Algebra 2, pre-cal, so use Algebra 1 and 2 with an open source textbook, cover all the concepts you need to cover, everything. Then you take pre-cal, you cover the whole book of Larson, and then you take geometry, you cover the whole content, the whole book as well. And you wouldn't believe that in 269 days, I repeat, 269 days without any, I mean, you can have your weekends off, but as long as you're striving to do five hours from five to 10 hours of math, mostly I would say seven hours of math a week. If you're doing about seven hours of math a week, you would have taken algebra one, algebra two, pre-calc and geometry all in one year. So you can take an 8th grader, and by ninth grade, they're in Calculus 1. Now, that's the approach I would like to see. Let's help kids get to Calculus. Now you ask, Amos, what's the rush? Why do I want my kid to be done with all of this? Number one, because when they're in 8th or ninth grade, they have more time to actually study for the ACT. Why don't we do it that way? So that when they're in 10th grade, they have a lot of time to study for the ACT. And then number two, why do we do it this way? Why do we call people to to learn all the math early and as effectively and efficiently as possible because a lot of young people don't know what they want to do with their lives. So what if we could focus on getting this math piece done, teaching them the applications, teaching them the math history, then they have time to figure out more of what are the tools I've been given so I can get to work. The plan we're using now, unfortunately, is not leading to more people becoming excellent mathematicians out of our high schools, out of our middle schools. So why don't we t try a different approach? An approach that would be similar to what people like Isaac Newton did, which is you take the concept and you strive to master the concept. You don't just learn how to add fractions just to pass a test. You learn how to add fractions because you know that fraction addition is something you're going to need again and again and again. Take the topic seriously. Give your best. And we will see more kids doing calculus in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade for fun because calculus is beautiful. So please, I want to encourage us to encourage young people and to build curriculums that are very effective and efficient in helping our young people become the best they can be. Thank you for your time. My name is Amos Tarfa. Have a wonderful day.